here with United Lynnhaven United Methodist Ch uh, Children's Church. I'm Miss Mary. This is Miss Bobby. Yeah. And this month, our new month, October, we're going to be talking about integrity. So let's find out what that means. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. That's right. Integrity is about more than just telling the truth. It's being truthful in every part of your life. You don't go around pretending to be something all the time. Like you might pretend to be a giraffe or, I don't know, a princess in a castle. But, you know, you, you just act like yourself and you follow God and live his way, whether you're at home, school, church, or anywhere. All right, so speaking of truthful, we've got a game to play, okay? Um, this game is called Farmer's Market because we've got an empty basket here that we need to get filled up with some fruits and veggies that we have here hidden in the cooler. All right, we've got some very special guests here to play along yes. with us. And let's go ahead and we'll bring them out because we're gonna figure out who's gonna be our guessers and who's gonna be describing these vegetables and fruits. So here we are, let's bring them out. We've got Miriam Walker and Esther. Oh, yeah. you can hear it all the way from home, right? Okay, so I think we've already predetermined this, but we decided who's gonna be the guesser. Miriam, okay, so Miriam's gonna guess. She knows lots about vegetables. They're her favorite, right? Be truthful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, so they're not her favorite. So she's a little worried about the vegetable part. But we have fruits in here too. All right, and so these two wonderful people, Walker and Esther, are going to be describing the fruit or the vegetable to her. She's gonna put on that blindfold and try to guess, but they can't say what it is, all right? So, Miss Bobby, we have one minute timer-ish. Um, we'll give them one minute to see how many fruits and vegetables they can get in the basket. Are you guys ready? Any questions? You guys always tell the truth, right? Right? And you're e okay, no problem. Okay. All righty. Are we ready on our timer? Yep. Got it. All right. You ready for the first fruit? Set. Um, it, it's juicy. Juicy. It grows in the ground. Kind of, yeah. Kind it's of. orange. It is the color orange. <laughs> orange and orange. It's an orange! Okay, good. All right, next one. All right, this will be Miriam's favorite. It's green. It's green. It grows out of the ground. Uh-huh. What does it kind of look like? Um... It looks yeah. like a tree. Looks like a tree. Broccoli. <laughs> Broccoli, your favorite. Okay, good. All right, another one. Boom. Um, it's yellow. It, yeah. It grows out of the ground. <laughs> Everything. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's juicy too. How's it taste? Sour. Super sour. Lemon. Yes. Okay. 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 Next one. Boom. Um, it still grows out of the ground. <laughs> it does. Okay. Um, it has a stem on it. Has a stem. For the, for the last, what color was it? Yellow. Who eats it? Monkeys. Yes! Banana. Banana! <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty good. She even knew the broccoli, which was probably not her favorite. Awesome <laughs> job, guys. That was pretty good. Good describing there. And you know what? Something about fruits and veggies, they all grow from the ground, don't they? That's the good thing about them. I, I like that. All right. Well, we have a prize for you that's a little less healthy. Is that okay for you guys? <laughs> all right. You guys can all go to Dairy Queen and get whatever it is that you would like. How does that sound? Good. That sound good? <laughs> Anything you want to say to your audience at home? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. Woohoo! Only Moe's. They got a basket full of yummies. Woo! Guys are good. That was so much fun. And look at all the stuff we've got in the basket. We added a few things because we're actually gonna use these veggies to introduce our Bible story for today. We've got a great story that shows some big time integrity right here in this little book I like to call the Bible. And I'm talking about the story of a guy named Daniel. 
That's right. You might have heard about a time that Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. Very popular story. That's the same Daniel that we're talking about today, but this part of Daniel's story happened many years earlier. When Daniel was younger, some people even think he was maybe a teenager or a young man. Okay. And so, so during this time, God's people were not following God or worshiping him. So unfortunately, the land where they lived, Judah, was conquered by the king of Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar. I don't know if that's how I like to say it, but yeah. Or I can just say King Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> King Nebuchadnezzar didn't respect God or God's people, the Israelites. He wanted to take away things from these people and even took Daniel and some of his friends to train to serve him. All right, so this is their story. And today we're going to tell it with some of my favorite veggies. So let me introduce our characters. Okay, first we have a head of cabbage it's daniel because he acts as the head of the group of israelites get it head cabbage you bet anyway whatever <laughs> no, yeah, exactly all right so here are the rest of his friends who are also israelites brought to babylon we know them as shadrach broccoli meshach the corn or abednego le zucchine so those are our Characters. That's right. And then over here we have the Babylonians. The chief of the king's court was named Ashpenaz, and he's the Twinkie here. Twinkie. <laughs> and we have the king Nebuchadnezzar himself. King wearing a ring. Yeah, king wearing a ring. And here we have the guard that was in charge of Daniel and his friends. We'll use the all right, so now that you know everyone, I'm sure you've got it memorized, okay? We're going to get started. So it's like veggie. Yeah, veggie tales, veggie tales. Okay, anyway, sorry. It will all begin when King, um, the king gave Ash Penez, or whatever, an order to find young men who were smart and healthy, like these guys right here, right? Ash Penez chose Daniel and the others from Judah to come to Babylon. So like, do, 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 go to Babylon. All right, okay, very good. All right, so King Nebuchadnezzar was trying to get them to become like the Babylonians since they now lived in the Babylonian Empire. Now, the Babylonians believed in lots of false gods. So Ashpenaz trained Daniel and his friends for three years. He even gave them new names. Oh, yes. Okay, so let's try this. This is like tongue twister land. Okay, he gave Daniel the name Belshazzar. Okay, he gave Hananiah the name Shadrach, and he gave Mishael the name Meshach, and he gave Azariah the name Abednego. This is a challenging one, right, guys? But those are the names that we actually know those guys from the Bible today, so we're going to go ahead and use that. But we still call Daniel Daniel because that's the name he uses throughout the book of the Bible and in the book that we're reading, which is the book of Daniel. Yeah. That's right. So we have the king and Ashpenaz wanted Daniel and his friends to be more like, well, the Babylonians. So they tried to change how they spoke, how they looked, and even what they ate. All right. So Daniel did not want to dishonor God by eating the king's food, okay? So he asked Ashpenaz, oh, Ashpenaz, and he asked him for permission not to eat it. But he refused. So that's right. Even As Ashpenaz said in Daniel 1:10, and he says, "I'm afraid of the king. He is my master. He has decided what you and your three friends must eat and drink. Other men are the same age as you. Why should he see you looking worse than they are? And when he sees how you look, he might kill me." Mm, okay, so nobody wants that. So Daniel decided that he would ask something else. So he goes over and he speaks to the guard, Mr. Cupcake, okay, who was in charge of them. Daniel asked the guard to put them to the test. He said, please test us for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables and water to drink. Then compare us to all those other young men who eat the king's food. See how we look after that. And then you can do what you want. So. Well, it was a big risk. If Daniel and his friends only ate vegetables and water, how could they possibly look as strong and healthy as the other young men who were eating the king's food? Now, the guard agreed to let them try. 
And after 10 days, Daniel and his friends, well, they looked healthy and wed, well fed. I mean, look at them. Look at those veggies. So big and strong. Okay, come on, broccoli. Okay, so in fact, they even look better than the young man who ate the king's food. So the guards didn't try to make them eat the king's food anymore. He allowed them to just keep eating vegetables and water so they could honor God. And that's not all. God continued to give Daniel and his friends knowledge and understanding of all kinds. Daniel could even understand other people's dreams. Okay, so when Daniel and his friends finished their three years of training, he asked, or as Penez brought them before the king, okay, so we're here before the king, and he asked them advice about difficult things that required them to have like great wisdom and understanding, and the, the answers that Daniel and his friends gave or 10 times better than those of any other. So God had protected them and helped them to succeed. Daniel and his friends served King Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> and Babylon for years. They eventually became the king's most trusted advisors. But even though they served the king of Babylon, they never stopped standing strong for the one true God in everything they said and did. They showed what it looks like to live with integrity. Even though they were in a whole new place and people tried to get them to change who they were, they didn't stop following God. And just like Daniel and his friends, you can choose to live with integrity. You can choose to be truthful in whatever you say and do. So let's remember our bottom line for this week. Be truthful with your whole life. You know with that, let's go ahead and pray and ask God to help us do just that. Dear God, we know it can be hard to have integrity when we're in scary or stressful situations. Now please help us to be truthful with our words and our actions in every part of our lives. When things get tough, help us to choose your way, just like Daniel and his friends did. We know that following you is always best. We love you, God, and we want to follow you always. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Daniel and his friends were in a tough situation. They were taken to a faraway land with people who tried to teach them all kinds of new and different things. And those things didn't always fit in with what they knew was true about God. Yeah, but Daniel and the others knew something important. They knew what it meant to live with integrity. They could, could have been tempted to change in order to, you know, fit in. But instead, they chose to stay true to, who, to what they knew God wanted them to do. All right, so we can look at Daniel and his friends as an example of what it means to follow God. We can always look at the way Jesus lived. Jesus always showed integrity. He never backed down from saying and doing what he knew was right, even though it meant he had to die for us on the cross. That's right. Now, remember our bottom line. Be truthful, truthful with, with your, your whole life. life. <laughs> All right, choose to follow God with every part of your life because his way is always worth following. All right, we've got a new memory verse this month, Proverbs 10, 9. It's a great reminder about living with integrity. So let's say it together. Read it with us. Anyone, anyone who, who lives, lives without blame walks safely, but, but anyone, anyone who takes, takes a crooked path will get caught. Proverbs 10, 9. That's right. Every day we can choose to live truthfully. That might mean not playing certain video games or, I don't know, watching certain movies. Even if they look really cool or super popular, it might mean standing up for what's right instead of trying to fit in. Remember, stay true to who you are. Stay true to who God wants you to be. Live out what you know is right. And you know, you'll never regret it. All right, so what does that look like for you? We want you guys to talk about it at home with your family after the so-and-so show, of course. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. I like to go swimming. Uh, my favorite snack is apricots. Uh, I always forget to mail my dad a birthday card. Oh, okay. Those are, those are good ones. Um, what's the lie? What's the lie? Swimming. Swimming. You don't really like swimming. Actually, I do. Like oh, the lie no. was the birthday card. I'm I'm pretty great about remembering birthdays. Okay. Go. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. It's uh, that's impressive. Okay. My turn. My turn. I have hair. I wear glasses. 
I'm immune to gravity. Okay, that's a tough one. Uh -huh. uh, I'm gonna have to go with the gravity thing. Oh! Yes, how'd you know? I, I don't know. All right, all right, you go. Here Your we turn. go, okay. I hate pepper jelly. I used to be afraid of chipmunks. I own 42 copies of the book, The Hobbit. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I know this one. I know it's The Hobbit. That's because you only own 39 copies of The Hobbit. Do you count my books? I am the son of an astronaut. I eat chocolate pudding at 3 a.m. And I have 12 toes. Okay. <laughs> The game is two truths and a lie, John, not three lies. Neither of your parents is an astronaut. You wouldn't eat chocolate pudding at three every morning because you always need help opening your pudding cups. And as far as the 12 toes, I think I would have known. You don't know how many toes I have. You don't know. I mean, I'm pretty, no, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. I'm gonna show him. No, 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 no. Hey everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and welcome to the Sue and Sue Shoe. <laughs> You're so funny, he's so funny. The so and so show, John. <laughs> but he's right, welcome to our most devoted, loyal, happy audience who always warms our hearts, gives us purpose, and makes us feel so cheerful. Wow, you are in a good mood today. I'm always in a good mood, John. Really? <laughs> I'm the peppiest person I know. Oh, you must not know a lot of people. What was that? Oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Any minute now. Any minute now what? Oh, I'm, I'm interviewing later today to be a member of a very prestigious society. Oh. The interviewer should be here. Any minute now. What's the society? Oh, the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People. <laughs> Oh, you're being sincere. Yeah, of course I'm being sincere. I'm a sincerely, perpetually peppy person. You? I am! Okay. Okay, maybe I'm not always peppy, but anyone who's anyone is a member of the SOS PPP, and I prefer being a perpetually peppy person who's popular, plus it looks really good on a resume, so if you'll just make me look good in front of the interviewer, I would really appreciate it. Do you think you can do that for me, best friend in the whole world? Um, sure. All right. Hello, peppy people! <laughs> <laughs> My name is Samantha, and I'm the Senior Assistant Selector for the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People! Well, welcome, welcome! Oh, you must be Brandon! Oh, what? No, no, I'm John. Uh, this is Brandon. Yes! Oh, oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm the Brandon that you were, the person you wanted to see when you, when you, well, I'm, I'm the, he, he's me. <laughs> it is a pleasure, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> sit, yes. sit, sit, sit. I am sitting. No, what no. Is, oh, oh, hey, hey, sit down. Oh. I mean, would you, uh, here, have a, have a seat here. Oh, okay. There oh, you go. Okay. On, the, on the chair that there's Thank what you. I was putting Thank out you. for you. Thank you. Let's go, let's go. Yeah. So, how are you doing today, Brandon? Splendidly. I'm so good because of, you know, all of the... The, the, the birds and the sunshine and the happy, happy thoughts. Yeah, yeah, he was uh, so happy this morning, I barely recognized him. Oh, John. I, I mean, I mean he, you know, I looked at him and I said, whoa, who, who is this? Please stop helping me. I, I really like your club. Yeah. Oh, well, Thank thank you. We at the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People pride ourselves on our constant cheerfulness, happiness, peppiness, merriment, glee, and bliss. D don't those all mean the same thing? <laughs> Let's get to the interview, shall we? Oh, I love interviews. Actually, it's more of a game. Oh, I love Ooh. games. Yeah, me too. Can I play too? Of course, awesome. of course. So I'll hold up a photo, and you say the first thing that pops in your head. Oh, I love saying the first thing that pops into my head. I do it all the time. Uh, uh, door. <laughs> uh, lamp. Uh, uh, giant pencil. I'm having so much fun. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so photo number one. Uh, Brandon, you go first. Uh, okay, uh, sleep. 
No, I only say that because sleep is what I want to do when I watch soccer. I mean, it's not a negative thing. Sleep is important for your health. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, um, try to keep your answers to one or two words, okay? Oh, right, yeah. Okay, <laughs> right. right. Um, John? Uh, fun. Okay. Numero dos. Uh, uh, brain freeze. Yummy. Mm. Three? Uh, oh, loud. Uh, beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm, ants. Oh, watermelon. Um. Uh, oh, oh, expensive. Party. Um, excuse me. Uh, Brandon, are you okay? Of course. Why? Well, it, it just seems your answers don't seem particularly perpetually peppy. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I think I'm just nervous. I mean, you're the senior assistant selector. If I'd have known they were bringing the SAS of the SOS PPP here, I'd have been more personally prepared to be perpetually peppy. Uh, I see, I see. Yeah. But just so you know, the society of sincerely perpetually peppy people isn't for everyone. Some people are only peppy periodically, and that's okay. It is? Certainly! You know, some people only want to join the society because they think it'll make them popular. What? I know, I know. But what really matters is staying true to who you are. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's get on with the game, shall we? Uh -huh. All right, I just have one more picture. <laughs> oh! It's, it's Bible, Bible story time with Galen! Hey, Kellen. Hey, Kellen. I am very excited for our story today, so let's jump right in. Take it away. Okay, over 2,000 years ago, around 600 BC, there was a kingdom called Babylon with a king named Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar was not exactly a good guy. In fact, he was pretty evil. King Nebuchadnezzar... You know what? That's a really long name. So I'm just going to call him King Nebi. King Nebi and his army surrounded and attacked the city of Jerusalem. And he stole from the temple of God. Then King Nebi gave the order to take some of the Israelites hostage so they could be his personal servants. He wanted only the smartest, strongest, and healthiest to be brought to Babylon as captives to learn his ways and serve him at his palace. One of the men captured was named Daniel. Daniel wasn't exactly a superhero. He was just a person like you and me, but he was put to a big test. As part of their training, the men who were captured were ordered to eat food from the king's table. This food was different than the food they normally ate to honor God. And Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, believed the king's food would make them unclean. Yeah. So Daniel asked an official for permission to eat something else. But the official was afraid that if Daniel and his friends didn't eat the king's food, they would become weak and unhealthy. But Daniel was determined to stay true to who he was and to honor God no matter what. So he convinced the guard to give him and his friends only vegetables and water for 10 days. And after the 10 days, Daniel and his friends looked stronger and healthier than everyone. After that, Daniel and his friends were allowed to eat the food they wanted. God gave these four men knowledge and understanding. They became some of the wisest men in the kingdom. It may not have been the best circumstance. Daniel and his friends had lost their homes. They'd lost their freedom. But with God's help, they kept their honesty and their integrity, and they stayed true to who God made them to be. The end. What a cool story. Yeah, even with all that pressure to be like everyone else, Daniel chose to be himself. You find a lot of that in the Bible. Look at Jesus. 
it would have been really easy for Jesus to go along with the crowd. But instead, he only lived the way he knew was true, even if it meant giving his life up for you and me. Incredible. Thanks, Kellen. Hey, see you next time, Kellen. No problem, fellas. Bye. Bye. John, you were right. Whoa. You think I was right about something? <laughs> oh, do, do go on. No, it's about the society of sincerely, perpetually peppy people. That's not me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, no, it's not. And I'm okay with that. I mean, it's great to be happy and peppy, but it's also good to have other emotions too. And I'd rather be myself than try to fit into some club. That's awesome. Brandon, I am very proud of you. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. I'm practically perpetually proud. Okay. I am positively pleased. Okay, stop. <laughs> Reveal the question. How do you want people to describe you? That's interesting. How do I want people to describe me? What do I want to be known for? I, I, I want to be known as the life of the party. The guy who can, you know, stick out his tongue and touch his nose. And I want people to describe me as someone who's sometimes peppy, sometimes not. And that's okay. <laughs> What about you? How do you, how do you want people to describe you? Hey, look, I did it. I stuck out my tongue and I touched my nose. Yeah, that's very, very that talented. Good? We'll see you next time on the So and So Show. Yeah, bye. Please place the pleated pressed pants on the plain pressing plate. A pack of pesky pixies. A pack of pesky pixies. Frothy fructose. Frontogenesis. <laughs> that Frothy was that was fructose. September. Mom makes mash m m marmalade. Gum gets gooey. Gum gets gumptious. Gooey gumptious gum is gargantuanly gooey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>